Hey everyone, how are you? Dr. Darren Dubiak, Advanced Integrative Medical 360. And again, with us today, the best nurse practitioner, Alexandra Hessem. So, what better way of talking about testosterone for men and women than having the two of us go over with you? And we wanted to do this in a fun way today because, Allie, how many patients do we have, especially our female patients, they don't even know you have it, right? True. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people think, well, you know, I'm a guy, I just have testosterone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You That's got other hormones. You, Testosterone's for men. Right. It's like that book. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus, right? Maybe, <laughs> like that. maybe that is why we have so many issues, men and women. But like I said, we see when people come into our office and we always talk about how imperative the blood work is for our patients, right? Extremely. Yep. Extremely. It tells your story. Exactly. So I'm going to start first. And the reason I'm going to start first is there's a great information I want Allie to talk about for testosterone in females. So first and foremost, where is this stuff made? Well, for men, testosterone is made in our testes and our adrenal glands. So low testosterone for men, we'll see it as low sex drive, um, bloating, gas, bigger abdomens, hair loss, weight gain. So a lot of these things, guys, mimic other hormones, such as the other T word we talked about in the past your thyroid, right? And how many patients of ours, Allie, come in and say, well, my doctor checked my thyroid and it's fine. Uh, all of them. <laughs> right, all right. Of them. And how many of our patients come in, men and women, that don't ever have this tested? Never. It's hardly ever tested. It's like the thyroid. We don't dig into the thyroid and we also, in primary care, we don't dig into the hormones the way that we should either. Mm -hmm. Now you say in primary care. What do you mean by that, Allie? You now are with Integrative Medical 360. Tell people how long you were with primary care. I worked in the traditional med medicine setting for over 10 years. So primary care is very different. It's kind of straightforward in a way and we don't do a ton of digging into problems um, like we do here. And uh, the thing that I dislike about primary care the most is how we don't help patients change lifestyle things because at the end of the day, how much you weigh, what you're putting into your body, those are truly two of the most important things that you can do for yourself at baseline to make yourself healthier in the long run in terms of any disease process. And mm -hmm. we don't do that. We tell patients, oh, well, you know, you're overweight and um, you gotta lose a little bit of weight, you gotta clean up your diet. Well, patients have no idea what that means when you tell them that and then you send them on their way and they have no idea what to do. So you see them again in six months and guess what? It's the same problem or it's worse. So we give them no direction. And not only no direction, when they come back six months later, what did you usually do in primary care then? A medication, right? Depending, yeah. Right, and that's so sad. I mean, guys, I always talk about, well, my patients are in front of me and Allie hears it and, and a lot of people laugh about it, but I call it the grandfather syndrome. And let me tell you what I mean by that. At the end of the day, Allie made a great point. We have to take accountability for ourselves, right? I remember being young, if we misbehave, my grandfather would always tell my parents, give me the grandkids for the weekend, right? It was almost, remember how they used to do that? And it's the same thing now with food and lifestyle. Take accountability. We have one body to do this right and one time around to do this right. So I wanna talk about testosterone again in men. So higher testosterone in men, we see acne, blood pressure. Allie and I will see different patients come in here where they'll have different issues each morning. If, they, if their blood pressure's off, they'll feel dizzy, lethargic, things like that. The big issues that I, like I keep saying that I really wanna go over with today and why it's so important to have Allie is because testosterone is a word that's always thought of with just men. And I want Allie to go over a little bit. So her and I are gonna talk, she's gonna do most of the talking. I want her to go over what we see with women who have left low testosterone. And one of the number one things that we see is not only a weight loss, but our hormone center. Again, guys, Integrative Medical 360, we're seeing so many people and so many women with low libidos too. Hey, trust me, us guys, low libido i get it but a lot of the times it's not just our fault right no. we want you guys to have great libido too and we see that testosterone also in women 
is a huge catalyst and a huge reason of why those things aren't happening. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna let her take over low testosterone in women. So a lot of it is very similar to men, but women can experience different things because at the end of the day, we're very different than men. You know, women lose weight very differently than men do. If any husbands and wives have ever tried to lose weight together, your husband probably lost a lot quicker than you are. And that's not because you did anything wrong. It's just because you're different at the end of the day. Your body composition is very different than the male body. So low testosterone for a woman, also low libido, just like men, low sex drive. Fatigue is another thing. Decreased mood, so women can be depressed from low testosterone, muscle weakness. Low testosterone comes from a lot of different things though. And really big things that I didn't, ever kind of connect the dots with in primary care, but we give a lot of birth control to women. Uh -huh. um, we give things like spironolactone, um, which helps women with PCOS and you know people that have high testosterone levels, which goes into women that have PCOS, they tend to have higher testosterone levels and the spironolactone is an androgen receptor blocker. So it blocks that testosterone, so you're not having all those other unwanted things, but at the end of the day, there's no so it's kind of counterproductive because then you're giving yourself typically a lower testosterone level, but you don't ever know that because we don't check these things, but you're on these medications to lower your testosterone and you have no idea. It's just a snowball effect. Like I mm -hmm. talked about with the thyroid where you take a medication right. and it cures one problem, but then something else happens as a result of that. So, I mean, Allie, when you just said that, I mean, think about how many people have been misdiagnosed. Yes. Right? Just be simply because of a medication that they're on. Yep. It's or not having mm -hmm. enough of the information mm -hmm. to make that decision. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. This is, I think, a bigger one because we find high testosterone in women particularly and we treat that, but then the bigger problem ends up being that their testosterone is low, but we never pick up on that. You know, and birth control, again, you know, everybody calls birth control a hormone. Oh, we're taking hormones, we're taking hormones. And they're not actually hormones. I mean, they're synthetic versions of a hormone, but there is nothing, the composition of what you're taking does not resemble anything that, you're, that your body makes on its own. So those hormones that you're taking, the hormones, they actually inhibit your body's natural production of your hormones, which you need for, for bone health, for, you mm -hmm. know, um, for preventing cancer. I mean, there's so many different things that go into that. So birth control, while it does play a really good part for some reasons, it actually is hurting you a lot more in the long run. And this can be why. So high testosterone, um, common symptoms that happen with that. PCOS, we've all heard of that. Um, women tend to have higher testosterone levels. They will have acne issues because of that. They will have increase in facial hair, body hair. Um, infertility is common with that as well as it is for men. Um, irregular menstrual cycles goes along with PCOS. Again, you know, higher testosterone levels, it throws off your menstrual cycle. All of your hormones are your sex hormones. They're all tied together. So when one is off, it's going to throw the other ones off as well. And then changes in mood. It goes both ways, low or high. People can be anxious. They can be depressed. But sometimes I think that the mood part of it comes in because patients just don't feel good in general mm -hmm. because of what the underlying issues and what's happening that they become depressed and they become anxious because they don't understand well, why do I feel this way it's the right. same as the thyroid like mm -hmm. we talked about before so mm -hmm. you know Ali listening to you and we do this every day I, I still love listening to her explain this because it's so easy and it's so relevant the biggest issue is I tell everyone have the facts have this information so get the blood work done right get the blood work done yeah I, get it checked I, I, get it's these good. items done get yeah. checked and if your pcp ob guy and he doesn't do it call us it is relevant because just like ali said being in primary care for years how many times is this overlooked ali i think takeaway points today is this number one is we see how many people are not getting this done but especially women would you agree Oh, 100%. Or sure. told, hey, it's your age. Mm -hmm. Don't don't worry about it. For These sure. things happen. Yeah, and, sure. and you know what's For funny? Sure. You're menopausal, you know, <laughs> you're, you had a baby, you're, you know, you're overweight, all these different things. They're just like mm -hmm. a Band-Aid over mm -hmm. the problem and nothing ever gets resolved and it just gets worse and it leads to mm -hmm. other things that just make you feel poorly and more medications and more specialist visits. And it snowballs like a lot of the other things that 
mm -hmm. we go through in mm -hmm. primary care. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is our nurse practitioner, Alexander, who I keep saying monitors every patient's medications and everything that we do here, this young lady reads and looks over. And that's how much faith and belief we have in her and our entire staff and all of our offices, how much we rely on this young lady. And I want to go over, you know, Ali, you made a very, very good point. And, and it's amazing to me because we say it so candidly is, oh, birth control. It's amazing how much that one drug, remember, I'm a guy, you know, but I hear every female on birth control. And I'm like, okay, obviously for the obvious reasons, right? Mm -hmm. But then the more and more you and I sit with these patients, especially our female patients, mm -hmm. it's utilized for almost everything. Mm -hmm. We have to find other ways around it because I think that birth control, you know, it was such a great thing and we fought for that so much at one period of time in the past, but um, we didn't know what the repercussions were going to be like for that. So Right. And trust me, Allie and I are not telling people to stop taking your birth control no, or any of your hormones. That, but if you're having some of these problems, we have to look into it a little bit deeper and we have to try to come up with alternative things if this is the case for you. What are those alternative cases? So as Allie will talk about and as I will go over, we do a lot with food. We do a lot with nutrients and supplementations and another huge component of what we do in our practice is hormone replacement help is that correct? Mm -hmm. correct so and that's a huge component of how to help our female patients and really how to live your best life mm -hmm. so Allie tell everyone our website at integrativemedical360.com bingo call us at 412-227-9255 again thank you Wendy for letting us be on your Facebook, yes, on your show. We always you. thank you, thank you, thank you. She's in the crowd today. Yes. Um, and again, guys, thank you. Give us a call. Get these items checked. Have the facts. Know what to do. Allie, thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll talk You're to welcome. you guys soon.